get some of the, the, the movements they've made. Cost cutting obviously has been quite important for them. We know, of course, about redundancies and so forth, but also uh, fixed income currencies and commodities in particular, them highlighting as, as driving what growth they are seeing. And rightly, as Peter mentions, though, investment banks are not doing too many deal out, deals out there at the moment. I mean, if we have a look at Macquarie at one stage a few years ago, we were talking about this stock perhaps being the first on the ASX to hit $100. In fact, it got as high as 98.64 back in 2007, and it's fallen a, a long way. It's now at about the 24.30 mark. And of course, this is because this is a company that is market driven, and that's really the key here. Macquarie has come out to say that they do expect earnings in the current financial year in FY13 to be higher than the last financial year, as long as markets don't worsen. And I think this is the key here. If we have a look at their business is they're really driven by market volumes as well as market returns and if we have a look at their divisions really most of their divisions are coming under pressure as you mentioned James not surprising to see the currency and the fixed interest part of things doing well but if we break it down division by division we know that Macquarie Securities is doing it tough because of trading income as well as brokerage and in fact this division is still likely to see a loss in the current financial year we have a look at Macquarie Capital where we know that there's been very few IPOs coming to the market that the deal, deal pipelines being very soft as well. Banking and finance as well as the funds division, we know the assets under management coming under pressure there and corporate as well as uh, finance, uh, corporate as well as asset finance, well, we know that the net interest margin has been coming under pressure there and the growth there are problems. So this is a company very much market driven and because the market has been soft, we have seen softness in terms of the share price. Remember the return on equity is still below the cost of equity for this particular company at around about 6.7%, so extremely low levels. And the key for this company is going to come when the market turns around and we haven't seen that yet. So I think the key in this statement today is really that FY13 will be higher as long as market conditions don't worsen and at the moment it does look like they are worsening. The market uh, I suppose to, to work its way through some macro issues as well as a lot of corporates coming out with various uh, announcements today. We're seeing our market down about seven tenths of a percent. Look what are you expecting for the session? We are expecting to see weakness with Europe front and centre of markets at the moment. So once again, we are expecting to see the material sector being heavily sold off. We've already seen BHP coming online down by about 1.5% and Rio Tinto losing around about 2.5%. So it will be the miners once again leading our market lower. But safe havens likely to be in focus. We know that investors have been flocking to safe havens over the last couple of years. So we are expecting to see those areas like the consumer staples, the healthcare, the utilities, the telecom sectors to outperform the market today. We'll probably most likely see losses in these sectors, but they're going to do much uh, better than the growth sectors in the market. If we have a look at the U.S. session, the U.S. Uh, tried to st stage a late rally uh, at the end of their session, but still the S&P 500 was down by 0.9%, and we did see the third consecutive day of triple-digit losses on uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So all up, some weeklies coming through, concerns about Europe really dominating the session and it is going to be those high beta areas like the material space which will be sold off the heaviest. Peter Iron today, um, this sector has really struggled last week and a little bit this week again. I think Fortescue well picked off, uh, up off the lows yesterday but Fortescue's opened lower. I can see Atlas Iron actually down by 3.7 percent. They've been pretty ambitious in their expansion plans. Do you think the share price reaction that, that near 4 percent drop today is in reaction to what they've said today or is there something bigger going on? I think it's just the fact that we are seeing some of those high beta areas selling off and a single uh, commodity uh, producer like Atlas Iron would be he more heavily sold off because of the pricing pressures that we are seeing in terms of the iron ore market. We've seen rebar prices coming back and they're sitting at around about a nine month uh, low now. So we are seeing prices coming under pressure there, although it does look like uh, demand has uh, kept up. We haven't seen prices keeping up. So probably those iron ore, those single iron ore miners are going to be hit quite quite heavily. Fortescue not doing too badly today, but we have seen a quite a large loss over the last couple of weeks with Fortescue coming out with its production uh, report last week. So uh, Atlas Iron down by about 3%, but mostly because the market's selling off on concerns about global growth and concerns around Europe.